We're squeezing in a lot today. Uh, it's Mother's Day. It's actually the last message of the series that I've been preaching, but it's an important time in our um, nation's history, isn't it? You know, you guys are paying attention to what's going on with the Supreme Court ruling of, of uh, Roe v. Wade. So I asked Mike, Mike, come on up here, um, to share a few words. Just because, you know, I, I, he doesn't, I don't know that we should self-claim titles, but, and I say this, I think, every time that he comes up here, and I'm going to keep saying it until you actually believe me. Do you, you want that? I do. Okay, good. Oh, you are? Okay. <laughs> that, which is all right. Yeah, here. So, uh, anyway, I, I, I believe you are a prophetic voice uh, in this body. You know, Mike and Tracy are elders in this body. Tracy back there, hello, hello. If y'all haven't met them, make sure you do. But uh, I believe you are prophets placed in this body by God. But there's a greater calling also, and it's to the cesspool of politics. <laughs> and it's, it's really tragic and unfortunate that, that something like a, like a right to life issue is dragged into politics. And so what I appreciate about the way Mike navigates that world is it, talking about it from a spiritual perspective, right? Because I, I don't, I'm not interested in playing politics. I'm not interested in trying to sway people to vote. I am certainly not interested in throwing all my expectations in the bandwagon of a particular political party or candidate. I'm just not interested in that. I'm not interested in waving flags for Trump or whoever. You know what I mean? I want to back whoever is going to be the most spiritual, godly, biblical person. And we, I don't think we've seen one of those in a while. Yeah. They, they, get, they get run through the ringer. Yeah. So anyway, I, what I appreciate about how Mike navigates the situation is it's a call back to the personal responsibility of the gospel. And, and I'm telling you, y'all pray for him because you, you probably don't know. He's not going to get up here and talk about it himself, but he has the ear of, a, of is very influential in the political sphere in this region was a state senator for many years, ran for Congress, which caused a lot of attention and attraction. And, the, and God's not through with you yet in that situation. And I, I know you kind of have a love-hate relationship with it, but I just want to affirm your voice is needed. And, and I, I personally wanted to hear what you have to say about this issue and what's going on in our nation right now. So Amen. thank you. Appreciate Amen. you. Amen. Thank you, Clint. Um, good morning, everybody. <laughs> So he, this is a, this is heavy duty stuff. I get. He says abortion sends me up here, and then he sits down. <laughs> uh, no, go ahead. It, and and half of you glare at me, so I got to undo that a little bit, right? It's kind of tough. It's tough stuff. Um, I, I'll start with this, and then maybe backtrack a little bit. So, how many of you heard that someone leaked a draft opinion? of the Supreme Court uh, recently? I mean, show of hands. Has, this is an informed group, group of people. So Mississippi has a law uh, that they put in place that basically bans all abortion after 15 weeks. That law was challenged in the courts immediately, which all pro-life kind of legislation at the state level, it gets challenged immediately, and most of our lower courts actually uphold the challenge and they set aside the law and it's made its way up to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court decided they wanted to hear this particular case and wanted to weigh in on it. So, I mean, the Supreme Court doesn't have to hear a case, right? They, they hear maybe 60 a year. That's not a lot in a nation of nearly 400 million people, right? There's a lot of lawsuits out there that never see the light get to that level. A lot of get taken up there, but the Supreme Court as a group, how many justices are on the Supreme Court? Very good. This side of the room was a little quiet. <laughs> What's going on over here? There's a lot of younger people over here, right? That very good point, Van, but we will not go down that subject trail right now, right? <laughs> Do you know why there's an odd number of people on the court? There can't be a tie. That means a decision will be reached, right? And so you go way back in Roe v. Wade. Are you familiar with Roe v. Wade? 
That was a, a, a challenge back in 1973, and the court made up law, made it up at the time that said uh, the right to privacy is such that abortion should be legal throughout the country. And they made up some various parameters for that, first trimester, second trimester, third trimester. How many of you know it's not the court's job to write the law? Don't, I mean, don't raise your hand if you don't know that. Whose job is it to write the law? The legislatures, right? At the state level and at the federal level, right? So that's how all that's the background. Clint asked me to give you a little bit of background. So it's, we've seen these battles for 50 years. The cost of that decision in 1973 has been enormous. 65 million babies didn't get to see this side of eternity. 65, this in America alone. Across the world, it's probably a billion. 65 million. If you just extrapolate what that would look like, what would America look like today? The, the, it's, it's, it's cumulative. It's not just, oh, there'd be 65 million more people in America today. They would have gotten married. They would have had kids. There would have been generations, three generations beyond that. But they're not here on this side of eternity because we as a people stood back and let a court make a wrong decision. But there's, the fights never ended. The fights kept pushing, kept pushing. That's why Mississippi passed laws. Georgia passed laws. States all over the country have passed laws that have said, no, abortion's wrong, we're going to limit it as much as we can or not, or just outright get rid of it. So that's the background for the battle, right? So somebody leaks an opinion, uh, a draft opinion, right? So the Supreme Court kind of works in secret. They kind of sit back there and they always write opinions and they come up with different ideas of how they're going to address the issue before the court. And Samuel Alito, the justice, um, started this draft opinion with these words, which is very interesting, and I appreciate this. He says, abortion presents, this is the very first line of the draft opinion, abortion presents a profound, this is the word that matters, moral issue on which Americans hold sharply conflicting views. That's what he starts with. He's clear. It is a moral issue. And so that gives you an idea of where he's going to go and the rest of what he's going to write. I mean, most of us took English class, and you kind of set your premise out there to begin with in the first, right? When you, you, okay? And so he sets his premise out there. And so I'm, 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 I'm challenged with how did we get here? How, as a nation, did we get to this point? How did we kill 65 million children? How did we kind of idly stand by and just watch it go on and go on and go on? And then why does it take a Supreme Court justice to say it's a moral issue? What have the churches been doing? I'm not, I'm not this one, not many. But as a whole, the body of Christ as a whole, we've sat on the sidelines. And how, why have we been comfortable with that? Well, I would put forth this concept. I would say we've been ignorant. Okay, that's not, that, I'm not being disparaging. But ignorance just means you don't have full knowledge. And I believe that ignorance is the soil in which destruction, the seeds of destruction are sown. There's two real kinds of soil in our lives. You've got ignorant soil, and then you've got the soil of truth. Why do we come here this morning? Why do we ever come? Why do we open the Bible? What are you looking for? Are you looking for an answer to your problems, or are you actually looking for what is true? Jesus says, you shall know the truth, and it shall set you free. This matters a lot. The political realm is such that they've abandoned the truth. And so all they do 
is try to give you the other soil, the soil of unbelief and doubt and fear, the soil of what's not true, right? The soil of ignorance. They can count on us if we are ignorant of what is true that they can plant seeds of destruction in our lives. Is that right? I mean, if you don't know the truth, somebody can come along and tell you something that's not true and you won't know the difference, especially if it sounds good and it feels good and it lines up with your current situation, right? You can be sympathetic to some of the insanity because you face some of these very difficult and trying choices. There's probably not a person in here whose families are not touched by the issue of abortion, whose family are not touched by some form of the destruction that it's wrought. But we've been ignorant to what's at hand. We've, we've adopted the lie. We have to obliterate ignorance in our lives. That's why I come to church every week. I love it because I hear the truth here. I'm a child of God. They, we sing it, we worship it, we hear it in the Word. We are children of God. We are ambassadors of the Most High. We are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, set apart and sanctified by God for good works. These are true things. Against such, the gates of hell shall not prevail. Because true is true, right? Somewhere along the line, we are in our ignorance, and we're all ignorant of a lot of stuff. I mean, just fess up, other than Sam. Sam's been around long enough that he, that he is no longer ignorant. You know if I get up here, I'm going to pick on Sam, especially if he's in the room. But <laughs> I'm ignorant of the fact that, that uh, Sam's my good friend. But do you, see, do you see where that goes? A little ignorance is all it takes for the seeds of destruction to be set in your life. And, he'll, and the evil one will water those seeds with fear, doubt, and unbelief. And they will grow up into division, corruption, and destruction fully. And that's what our whole world looks like, isn't it? Our nation feels like it. In this room, I can sense the hearts are wrestling with this right now. In their mind, we are so ignorant on some of this stuff that the truth is God created us in His image. That is true. It's not negotiable. It's not arguable. It's just true. Travis's suburban is white. It's true. Is that true? Okay. I just want to make sure. It's just true. And it may not be a suburban. Is it a suburban or something like this? Right? Just to be specific. Right? We are image bearers of God. Every child ever conceived is an image bearer of God. The abortionists, if they had their way, to be fully, fully in tune with their thinking, would have to erase from the mind of God your existence. Because God knew you before you were born. Figure that one out. If we're not children of God, then the killing of the unborn is still not okay. So it weighs here. Here we are as a nation. I mean, we're pretty split as a nation. In this room, there's probably some overwhelming support for getting rid of the, that whole idea, to ending abortion as we know it, to preserving life and protecting it and exalting it as what it is, right? But as a nation, we don't look like that. And there's, that's the big divide. The leak was done intentionally. Was it for good or for evil? And we don't know for sure. But the, it could have been, it could have been. The Supreme Court is an interesting bunch. It's pretty crazy that we as a nation sit back and wait for them to decide for us to decide what's right. I will not wait on their decision to decide what is right. I do not, I do not depend on the law of man to determine what is true. You hear that? 
We do our best with the law. And to give you an example, and I've said it before, we do our best as a, as a I've been in the legislature. <laughs> I've tried to erase a whole bunch of the law. <laughs> you know, that would have been a, a good start. But in Georgia, there, to, for us to actually codify civil society in Georgia, how much does that take? How many words? How many pages would that take? I mean, maybe the thickness of the Bible. I mean, the Bible kind of is pretty comprehensive. You would think that would be sufficient, wouldn't you? It's not. It's something like 28 volumes and 88,000 pages is the written legal code in Georgia, just Georgia. On top of that's the Federal Register that's probably topping a quarter of a million pages of trying to tell you how to live your life in a civil society. So if we as a people are going to wait until the law is settled in the courts to determine what is true, we are doomed. You need to determine what is true in your heart according to God. Jesus said it this way. I love his laws, right? Moses was kind of, he, he was kind of, he was a troublemaker. I, I think a lot of us would be like Moses. Seth would say, thank you, man. Thank you, man. See, I don't have to do all the heavy lifting up here, right? <laughs> could you see Sam contending with God? I could. I actually could picture that. He would go, go, he go, now wait a minute. It's just, you know, it's his Catholic background. I can't, I, it's just how it goes, right? But, yes, sir. In other words, what you're talking about is true truth. That's right. Not man's truth. Not my Amen. truth. Not true, true. Yes. Thank, thank you, Sam. And it, um, that's exactly where it, where it goes to. It's just what is true. We're blessed to come here every week and get to hear that. We really do. I appreciate Clint so much um, because that's just what he gets up here and offers. This is what's true. Don't argue with me about it, right? He doesn't have to apologize. He does not have to be ugly about it, but this is just what's true, and it is for the equipping of the saints. It is for the advancing of the kingdom. It is for the changing of lives such that we all walk in the fullness of what God has called us to be. And it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. This is good news, folks. I, he, he didn't I don't know how he could have said it better. It's, I mean, he said it was good news. It's unbelievable news. I mean, Isaiah got it. Who will believe our report? Who can imagine such a thing? That as image bearers of the king, we are light bringers. We obliterate everything the darkness brings. But for ourselves, we've got to get rid of the ignorance that binds us. Just fess up and say you're ignorant about some things. I, I, that just means you don't know. It's not, it's not malice towards you to say you're ignorant. It's just an acknowledgment of fact. I'm ignorant of music. I can't play a lick of it. Right? It's that type of thing. If I, but we need to avail ourselves of the truth. Amen? We hope the Supreme Court avails themselves of the truth. We hope that they strike down Roe v. Wade. But you know, at the end of the day, what still stands? So let's say that let's say that that leaked opinion is what they print. Roe v. Wade and Casey are gone as legal precedents in in America. What does that mean? Do y'all know? So the states go back, right? So then, that, does that look consistent across our country? No. It, it's very different. So is the issue issue of abortion gone from the face of our nation? Not at all just the location of it, right? So at the end, it brings us back. Clint used the word responsibility. Who's responsible? We are. How do we, how do we uh, put that into action? How do we put our responsibility into action in our republic? We vote. 
or we run for office, or we do something, or we can communicate life to people around us. It's simply the best thing. As ambassadors of Christ, we change hearts. There's not a single law I'll, we will ever write that will change the heart of man. If life could come through the law, it would have. It couldn't. The law just brings death. Right? And back to my previous point. I love Jesus' laws. Moses, it took 10 for him to get the general gist of things. Right? Jesus, it took two. To love God and love your neighbor as yourself. On this hang all the laws and the prophets. On this, every legal requirement of God, not man, not the United States, not Georgia, New York, or California, of God hangs on these two simple statements. That's why our founder said this, our form of government is only suited for a moral and religious people. People that are guided by that simple principle, only then does the republic work. We only win it, not because we win elections, but because we win lives for Christ. And we let them know the truth so that they might live free. Amen. I'm just going to, I just want to read a passage that, that really, you know, so it just verifies the prophetic nature of, of how God speaks through Mike, because you were dancing all around John 14. Um, and, and it's what I, it's what I wanted to walk through today. And I'm just, I'm just going to read this just to kind of solidify the seed of, of this, this, the scripture to back what he's talking about and our responsibility because, because it's a tough issue. And like he said, there are probably people in this room that have differing opinions. And maybe there are even people that are listening or watching that have had an abortion. And I just want you to know there's healing for you. There's healing for you. It doesn't make you a bad person. A lot of times it's done in ignorance. A lot of times young people, and, and, and this is what happens when laws are passed that don't reflect God's moral code is that the environment of a nation will train the minds of the young people to not anchor in truth. And truth is uncomfortable. Truth is difficult to adhere to oftentimes, especially if you are caught in an emotional situation. That's why we must be committed to the truth above emotion because it will inform us even when our minds are struggling, right? Ignorance is a killer. So let me just let me just read this passage. This is going to be in John. Uh, so you you quoted this Ephesians two ten. Uh, we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared uh, that we should walk in them ahead of time. Hebrews six tells us that we are to repent from dead works. Dead works are those things that we try to do. To plead that we try to do to earn things from God. No longer are you under the type of situation where, you know, if you've had an abortion, God's not mad at you. His heart breaks for you. His heart breaks for that situation that you you made that decision. He's not looking at you with evil intent and, you know, malice towards you. That's why he gave us Jesus. It's what we've been talking about for a few weeks, that death, burial, and resurrection. For so long, under the law, they tried, they had to live in such a way to appease the wrath of God and, and, and not bear the brunt of the penalty of the law. And from the cross forward, we live in right standing with Him. Created unto good works. And what are those good works? Let me just read through this. This is starting in John 14. Sydney, would you follow me through this? That way I can just read and, and you click through when I get to the end here. So John 14, starting in verse 12. So, so what do we do? What do we do? Civilly, and, and there's, a, there's a conference coming up. I think the website is 2022 Awakening. Is that right? Dot com? You, he'll look it up. But uh, there's, a, there's a couple in town that is putting on the conference. It's Andrew Womack and Mario Murillo and... A few other people. It's in June. 
I think it's June 10th and 11th. Um, we're going to go to that. Um, and, 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 you know, we're not trying to crank up a revival. It's really just educate people, the church, of, of uh, what it looks like to be a Christian influencing the law of the land, right? That, like, the more I listen to Mike, the, m- the more the walls come down of my own willingness to, to think and talk about these kinds of issues. Because I was always kind of like, I don't want to talk about politics. I don't want to talk about, I don't bring that stuff in the church. Let's talk about Jesus. But it's like, no, 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 no. We have the obligation to affect the laws of our society. And if we don't do it, who's going to do it? Well, we know who will do it because look at what's going on. So it's not about a political party or waving flags. It's about adhering to the moral code of God and standing in our ambassadorship and influence toward even our nation. Amen? So what do we do? This is from that spiritual side, but affecting society. And, and, and uh, I had talked to Mike about, you know, maybe talking a little bit more about civics and what it looks like uh, to, you know, what our rights are as Americans, and, and maybe it'll even influence other people that watch all around the world. There's so much to be said, and it's getting late, and I know it's Mother's Day. Let me read through this just to put in your mind what Jesus says about, okay, now on this side of the cross, this is how we are to live toward the world. Right? Last week we talked about our ambassadorship. We have the message of we have the ministry of reconciliation to go into the world and tell people God's not holding your sin against you. And, and that, you know, unfortunately, Christians are standing out in front of abortion clinics making women feel guilty. Shaming them, guilting them. And I'll say it again: if you've had an abortion, please, please, please allow God to cleanse your conscience because He loves you. And there's forgiveness in Christ. You don't have to carry that weight. I can't imagine that you ever get over something like that fully, but but you don't have to walk around with the guilt and the shame. Oftentimes it's ignorance. Uh, most assuredly I say to you, he this is Jesus speaking. He who believes in me, the works that so we are created unto good works, the works that I do, he will do also. Man. You know, and so when we hear that, we think miracles. But what I think about as I was preparing for this message is the woman caught in adultery, thrown down in front of Jesus, and what does he do? He doesn't condemn her. He lifts the guilt off of her because he knows he's going to pay for it, and he he addresses all the accusations around her and sets her free. Now, he does say, go and sin no more. He does address the issue, but he sets her free. No condemnation, amen? May the church lead with love, not with condemnation, even when addressing such issues. If we could do that, we would be so much more effective, and we would have the ear of lawmakers and people in general. I I just see it so clearly. Greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. I'm not even going to go there for now. Let's just keep going. Yeah, follow me along, please. Uh, so, John, so, and whatever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Whole another teaching. Let's keep going. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And he's talking about working with you. He's talking about the Holy Spirit working with you. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I've got this in here. Previously, uh, that was John 14. John 13, he tells what the commandment, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another. Was he not talking about that? Do you see that prophetic thread? I'm telling you, we need to pray for him because it's, 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 it's people like what God has put on his heart that we need in those arenas speaking the things of God, not in a condemning way, but drawing us back to the truth of who God is, presenting the gospel in love. I mean, I, you know, you, just, you nailed it. Uh, as I have loved you, that you also love one another by this all will know that you are my disciples. How, do, how does most of the world know that we're his disciples right now? Well, by, our by our judgment. Yeah. I mean, you're right. That's the scriptural answer. But what, what I'm asking is, how are we representing our, the, the, the word of the Lord in the earth right now? Guilt, shame, condemnation. They want nothing to do with this. I, I started to say shame on us, but no. 
It's ignorance. Say, I will not be ignorant anymore. You have the ministry of reconciliation. All right. By this all, we know that we are, uh, if you have love for one another, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth. May we feed on the Spirit of truth, even in such difficult situations. And, and may we know how to rightly divide and deliver truth in these kinds of situations. Because it's a matter of life and death, literally. Because in neither, it neither sees him, uh, let's see, uh, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. Say, I know him. For he dwells with you and will be in you. And so if you're standing there angry at people who are pro-choice, you're missing the point. How can you extend no guilt and condemnation toward them? I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you a little while longer, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Now, this is talking about Pentecost when he gives the Spirit. Because I live, you will also live. At that day, when the Spirit comes, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. And then I, I put this in here, 1 John 3.21, because he says, if you keep my commandments, what are his commandments? 1 John 3.21, beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, this is what we get to do. We get to go and set people free from the condemnation that's in their own heart because there is no condemnation from God any longer. Christ already paid for it. If someone finds themselves in eternity without Christ, it's not because God is condemning them. It's because they have not received that free gift of life in Christ, and they find themselves in outer darkness. So we have confidence. If our heart does not condemn us, the ministry of reconciliation sets people free from the condemnation that's in their hearts. We hear that testimony all the time in this place. We have confidence before God, and we will receive from Him what we ask because we keep His commandments and do what is pleasing in His sight. And this is His commandment, that we would believe in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and we should love one another just as he commanded us. That's the commandment. So back to 14, 22, Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to them, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father. So the context of you feeding on the spirit is loving God. But why do you love God? Say it louder. We love God because he first loved us. Amen? So even the commandment of God, of Christ, love me. It's as if Christ is standing there saying, love me. How do you love him? It's a response to his love for you. We love him because he first loved us. How in the world can we expect the world to desire and love God, especially live their lives according to his truth? if they don't see love coming from the church. Not permissiveness, not bending to the moral code, your truth is your truth, you're fine, you know. No, but not in guilt and condemnation. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him. And we already know that we love him because he first loved us. Even when we were dead in our sin, Christ died for the ungodly. So God's not waiting to love you until you love him. It's a response. And we, will, and, and we will come to him, me, Jesus talking about him and the Holy Spirit and the Father, and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the love and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me. How, how far are we? These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. Last verse. But the helper, say helper the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name or in my authority. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. 
Now, all the way up at the very beginning. Well, let me just say. The Holy Spirit will lead you. The Holy Spirit will guide you. He will teach you. And the Holy Spirit leads with love. So, so we have this physical, civil uh, responsibility of how to conduct ourselves as citizens of this nation, but we are citizens of a different nation, ambassadors of that nation, the kingdom of God, to represent God. I mean, there are prophecies about when the church rises up that the world will come to God's people to learn God's ways. That is possible. I, I remember... I don't even remember who it was. Well, maybe. Sorry, I had a skip in my brain. I, re I heard a prophecy, and, and I, don't, I don't anchor my life into prophecy. I look at prophecy as it should, it should verify what I feel like God has spoken to me. But sometimes there are those prophecies out there that it's like, okay, this is God speaking, you know, collectively. And I heard this prophecy, and, it, and, it, and it, the guy said this was probably 20 years ago, that Roe v. Wade would be overturned, that it would go back to the states, and when it back to the state, when it, when it would go back to the states, the church would rise up and be a light in the world. If we're going to be a light, we can't lead with guilt, shame, and condemnation. We must lead with love. And, and love educates also. And if if people perish for lack of knowledge, and I think that's why we're in the state that we're in as a nation, and even our personal lives, it's for lack of knowledge. And so it's time to be educated in the word of who you are in him and your civil responsibility. I, I feel that more now than ever, and I appreciate my guy. I credit a lot to him for, for just growing up. <laughs> I mean, you know, we all got to grow up at some point and, and not look at it as if it's well, anyway, I think you know what I'm talking about. I don't, I, I'm not saying we're going to become one of those political churches. I'm just saying uh, I, I want to rightly represent God in this earth in every way that we can. Amen? Don't you? So let me, let me ask you this. This is a serious question. Would you guys like to hear, I mean, because I, I tell Mike all the time, if you've got something on your heart, bring it. But let's all put Mike on the spot here just for a moment. <laughs> Would you guys like for him to keep us more informed about some of these kinds of... Ra raise your hand. Honestly, raise your hand if... Yeah, okay. It's a... <laughs> well, they could. Yeah, no. I mean, honestly, you know. Uh, Tori might lie in church, but the rest of you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I had that one in the back pocket. I was ready. <laughs> We love you, man. <laughs> One thing with the loving is as we love, it shouldn't be a bless your heart, I love you. Mm, dismissive. It needs to be in John 14, Jesus tells us, love one another. Yeah. have loved you. Right. It's not the way I love Peter. It's not the way I love you. Mm. It's the way Jesus, Jesus has loved us. loves us. Right. We have to come and love others yep. that way. It's a good word. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Created unto good works. Right. And that's that's the point. We are creating. Yeah. Look for opportunities to fulfill that. You know, and I'll just say this on the point of created unto good works that, you know, that God determined that we should walk in them ahead of time. It, it, that's describing a way of life of living, not 
there are specific things that you are supposed to do, and if you don't do those things, you're missing what God determined, you know, thousands of years ago before he created it. It's, it's a way of life. So what God is inviting us into is a way of life of good works. A way of life of good works. Leading with love, looking to love people as Christ loved us in every arena that we can. Not giving up on the world. I'm not making a statement about rapture theology, but if you are trying to figure out what time the rapture is next Tuesday, <laughs> be careful. Be careful. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying be careful because you will unplug from your responsibility to be an influence in this earth. And you will, you will hide and you'll give up. You'll give up on making a difference. And we can still make a difference. I mean, we can. Absolutely. This, this could still be the godliest nation on the planet that still affects the entire world for the good. Do you believe that still could happen? Yeah. Or does your theology say, no, nope, over, devil won, come on, Jesus, hurry up. Pray for divine appointments to be led, to be led into those good works. All right, give me give me the point. We don't need the details. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. said, you've got somebody coming to get you. And he said, well, my wife's supposed to come get me, but she hadn't driven in about five years, uh -oh. and uh, I don't know how long it'll take her to get here. I said, oh, Lord, we got to do something about this. I said, I think I have some jumper cables in the back of my truck. <laughs> sure enough, my husband, bless his heart, there was a brand new pair back there had never been opened. <laughs> <laughs> and I got them out and mm -hmm. just cranked right up. Good works. Look for the opportunity to be a blessing. It's the, big, it's, the, it's the design of God from the beginning to bless Abraham, bless his entire family, so that the, the, the nation birthed through Abraham, which is the church now, would be such a blessing in the earth that people would come to the family of Abraham to learn God's ways. That's our responsibility to form ourselves into the body of Christ in such a way that that's how we shine to attract people to come and learn God's ways. It's just where we are. So I challenge you, how can you do that personally for your own life? Next week, we actually have a friend coming in that's going to bless us. But the week after that, I think I'm going to kind of pick back up in this and look at our ministry toward the earth. Uh, so next weekend, Christy Metropolis will be here, and she's a blessing. She likes to take the word and make it super practical, so, so come, and it'll be a blessing. And um, Coweta Pregnancy Services, if you don't know, is a ministry in the area. We always support them. Are you, Tracy, are you still on the board? Okay, yeah, and Tracy has been on the board. My wife, Sarah, has been on the board. Uh, how many of you are familiar with Coweta Pregnancy Services? Yeah, they, have, they affect, uh, they, they, they save lives. They're down in Noonan. So one way that you can help them is they, so they offer um, free uh, uh, ultrasounds. ultrasounds. Oftentimes, when the young mother goes in there that has an unwanted pregnancy, they see the ultrasound and they see that baby on there and they see that heartbeat. That is what changes their mind, mm -hmm. seeing that heartbeat. What's the movie? Is it Abby Dawson? Unplanned. Unpl Man, you guys are on it. Let's see, what else can I ask? <laughs> this is fun. Uh, unplanned. Watch it. If you are struggling with this issue, educate yourself a little bit more. I'm not, I'm not trying to call you ignorant. It's hard. I get it. It's hard. And, and division happens all the time over, this, over conversations like this and beliefs. We see it. I mean, there are people, people, people waving flags and standing up with posters in front of... This morning, right now, there are fights happening all over the country because pro-choice people 
are standing in front of churches fighting those people. So, Father, we just thank you that those churches are led in love to be a blessing to those people. Jesus, we thank you that your spirit is with us, showing us how to lead with love, not compromising your truth, but to be a light in this world. You, you raise your hand quickly if, if, yeah. You sure? Are you sure? Okay. I, we're, this is a weird community. Did y'all, did y'all get something out of today? Uh, so anyway, I didn't finish. Um, so what's that? Grab a bottle on the way out, and if you, I like how you said it, fill it with cash. Uh, we do get them back sometimes, and there's a check in there. 100% of what goes into those bottles, we will get to the Coweta Pregnancy Services down there. They need it, and they are literally changing and saving lives. They just are. It's one way to participate. And let's hear it for our moms one more time. Thank you, moms. If you still have her, your mom, be nice to her. <laughs> Hug her when you see her. Are you with me? And if you're a mom, if, if you are a mom, hope to be a mom, or just a woman, just a woman. Uh, Adam and Stacy went and picked out some beautiful flowers because there's a lot of one, there's a lot of people that want to be moms. You know, we're believing and standing with you. Take a flower on your way out. Uh, if you're if you're going to see your mom later today, go ahead and grab one for her too. There, there's also another vase. Is there? Is there just the one in the hallway there? I oh, you hand them out. Okay. Um, you, can take two. you can take two. Love you guys. Thank you for being patient and listening. Thanks, Mike. Again, show Mike some love for bringing the truth to us. Just stand up with me if you would. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be a light in this earth. And if you're in this mo- room this morning, you don't know Jesus, but you want to know him, I would encourage you to come forward and just meet with one of our prayer team up here. If you need prayer for anything at all, these guys and girls are going to come up and agree with you and pray with you. If you'd like to come up and just experience all that the Holy Spirit has for you, come up and let these guys pray for you. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be a light in this earth. We are committed to your truth, but we will lead in love and no guilt and condemnation. We trust you. We open our hearts to be led by your spirit. We, com- we are committed to you in your name. Amen, amen. Jesus said you must be born again to enter into his kingdom. He's done everything to provide eternal life for you, and you only receive it by grace through faith. And we want to help you be sure in your salvation. You know, maybe you're new to Christianity. Maybe you're discovering things about God for the first time in your life, and you don't really know what it's all about. I've been there, trust me. I wasn't raised in a Christian home. I didn't know anything about God when I got born again and tried to approach the Bible, and it didn't make sense to me. So we want to help you. If you go to forward.church and click on Who is Jesus, we have a simple article on there that explains salvation, everything he did for you, how to begin to read the Bible and start to live a Christian life and incorporate his principles and how to engage the Holy Spirit for empowerment. You know, his grace wants to transform you. His love wants to make you whole. And we want to help you. If you've made the decision to be born again today for the first time, or maybe even a recommitment, and you're just not even sure what to do, how to approach the Bible, reach out to us. Email us at info at forward.church or call our office 770-828-5826. Go to our website, find the article on who is Jesus, and get started. He loves you. He's for you. He will lead you and guide you, and we want to help you. If you'd like to give today, you can give directly at our website, forward.church slash give, or you can text any gift amount to 84321. Thank you so much for your generosity. Would you like to stay connected with us? Then visit forward.church slash connect and click online guest. 
You'll receive texts and emails with links to free resources and notifications when we're going live on Facebook and YouTube. You are invited to join our Facebook group where you can interact with our pastors and our local and online church members. Visit Forward Taught Church and click Online Community under the Ministries tab or go to facebook.com slash group slash Forward Church. Thanks for watching today. I hope you got something helpful out of this message that you can apply to your life. If you did and you like what you heard, we have hundreds of free resources available online at forward.church or on my blog at clintbyers.com. We also have a church YouTube channel. I have a YouTube channel. We have SoundCloud, Spotify, you name it, we have it out there. Go like and subscribe to our social media platforms and share those. You know, it's, it's really an opportunity for evangelism to get these materials out online and you can help us. I would ask you to consider supporting Forward Church financially, but then you can also be a great help by going to these social media platforms, follow the accounts, like and subscribe to the videos that will drive up our viewership and we will reach more people together. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of our new content. We invite you to make the journey. Experience transformation from the heart through our free discipleship resources available at forward.church slash the journey. There you'll find free online courses, recommended reading, and other resources. For tons of free messages and other great resources, go to clintbuyers.com.